Now your next guest, an incredible power couple. We've got Lewis and Noreen Hobson. <laughs> on the show. Thank you. Your microphones and seats are right there. Hello, hello. So we have, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> Is there something you need to hide? I don't that's fine, that's fine. So, you've been on Broadway. Yes. Noreen, you've been producing all kinds of things, working involved with all kinds of stuff, and you were, are a talent agent of the Comb area, that's yep. correct. And you've done amazing things in your lives, but you all started here, isn't that That's isn't correct. That right? uh, like, literally on the stage. Really? Yes. Uh, when we went to college here, uh, we started Night of Musical Theater along with some other folks, and we actually did Night of Musical Theater on this stage, one of the yeah, first ones first, that we ever did. Your first Night of Musical Theater performance that you ever did was on this yes. stage in this wow. space right yeah. here. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, keep it up. And they would make milkshakes right over there, and so you'd have to, they'd have to stop making milkshakes after intermission, otherwise you'd be drowned out by the sound of milkshake yeah. being spun. Wait, they used to make milkshakes? Yeah, there's That's a little correct. kitchen, a little, little yeah. snack area at the now, Cape Verde. I think Peel is more expensive now, isn't that, isn't that true? I don't know, what do you guys, it's, it's about 15,000 a year? <laughs> yeah, something like that, Some, yeah. yeah. That's about what we pay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you started Night of Musical Theater. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Were you involved with that too, Noreen? Yeah, I, um, I was like a <laughs> dramaturg. Is that we're going to call it that? I would, yeah. I would like host it and then tell stories about the songs because it was all like a review. So I would oh, tell wow. stories about the songs before they would start. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we'd make a lot of copies together. That's correct. Yeah, we spent so much time in the library making copies, just copies for hours and hours. But we, um, you know, when we went here, the music department's fantastic, the theater department's fantastic, but there wasn't anywhere to do musical theater because they just never talked. So we said, well, let's start our own thing. And much like you guys are doing here, which is fantastic, I'm so impressed. This guy's amazing, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we, you know, we had the same sort of idea. We, let's just do it ourselves. And it was all students and a few faculty advisors, but we just started doing it. And it's like amazing that it's still going. So is that how you two met? Was making the copies in the copy room, or what was? Um, <laughs> no, but that sounds awesome. Yeah. That's a way better story. Uh, no, we we started dating. We met the very first weekend. The cheerleaders hosted a dance down in the like on lower campus. The first weekend, like an opening weekend, and we met at that dance, and we danced on together. The dance floor. On the dance oh, floor. On the dance floor, on the dance floor. Yeah, wow. my group of friends. To the tunes of the Bee, G Bee Gees, right? Yeah, Stand Alive, that was Stand the song. Stand Alive was our, the song we met to. Yeah, she had like a group of friends that she was dancing with, and my group of friends, and we were like, yeah, hey, how's it going? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a and long then, time ago, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's like a long time ago. <laughs> I joke sometimes, like there was knuckle dragging, and there was a horse-drawn carriage. There was no, <laughs> listen guys, there's no cell phones. There, there was no email. There was a computer center with green screen email. That's what we... There was a bank of computers that you could log into to check your email. Yeah, th this how, was a long time ago. How did you yeah. communicate then, with dance? I, we don't know, we, we don't remember. We, through dance, we only, we communicated <laughs> mostly through, that's why Noted Musical Theater brought us together, yeah. we could communicate right. through dance so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, where where did you go after you were here what was what was kind of the next step because you both have done amazing things what was kind of your next yeah step we, we were saying that we've had like seven full careers between the two of us yeah. over the last you know 20 years and we're not that old we're not that old <laughs> um, but we've no, done a lot of things in that time. we've done so many things but I, I basically started working in Seattle theater uh, when David Armstrong first came on at the Fifth Avenue uh, I was in his first season there and then just started working for like uh, seven years in, in Seattle, just bouncing around every single theater company, saying yes to every single reading. Um, and, uh, and then you did other things. Yeah, I, well I worked, the first job, the first real job that I had after I graduated in PLU besides working at Starbucks was actually coming back and working at PLU. Um, so I um, worked in the communications department here. Oh, come, come! Come. And then, um, and then I've, I've done a bunch of other things. I started my own business. I bought a talent agency and started my own business and consumed those talent. And then another agency, when they closed, I took on their talent. At one point, I represented about 550 people, which is a lot of people. So you learned a lot from Monopoly growing up. You just took yeah, everybody yeah. else's territory. Yeah. Just, just took, took it all. Um, <laughs> 
I represented little kids who, it was fun to represent little kids, but also like terrible. Terrible. And awful. Parents were terrible. If you've ever thought of being a talent agent, definitely not kids. Don't represent kids. Yeah. The kids are great. Their parents are insane. Um, I hope I'm, if you were a talent agent kid at my office somehow in this room, your parents are wonderful and fun. It was the other parents who were crazy. Exactly. Exactly. I but promise. I promise that's true. Um, and then, so I did that for a long time, and then I did communications consulting and acting coaching and, and on-camera stuff. I actually started doing acting, film and television acting, and, and things like that while I was a student at PLU. And um, we were talking earlier, I was a fit model for Nordstrom. I was like a talking mannequin for Nordstrom for a while. Wow. Um, they paid really great money, but they <laughs> literally stuck you with pins on the regular. Like, oh, shoot, sorry, Ooh. oh. Um, and they, yeah, so that was like a real experience. So I did a lot of different things, and then um, I do communications consulting now for a variety of companies. Right now I have a contract that I'm working with Microsoft, trying to make really boring things sound super interesting. <laughs> So could I go back in the whole mannequin thing? So what about, they were, were you just standing there and they were putting clothes on you? I, I measured correctly for the clothing that they needed, for the size of clothing that they fit, that like their designers made. Mm -hmm. And so they would put it on me and I would tell them how it felt like this Feels arm really feels, good. Yeah, it feels, it feels real nice. Um, no, like if, if the arm, if the armhole was tight, or if like something just didn't fit right, I was the right size for them to measure it. And they actually made a mannequin of me. They actually made like a thing well, on wheels. Not like the face or anything. No, it's just it was the body. faceless. I don't think that's better. Like I don't Android. think that's better. It was like a like a pushpin mannequin faceless, but there was me, and they referred to it as the big lady. No. Like that's really great for a teenager's self esteem. <laughs> I was probably almost 20 then, yeah. so it was fine. I was over it. What, where is this mannequin now? Have you destroyed it and blown I, it up? I don't know. Maybe the... it's still somewhere at the Nordstrom corporate offices. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be somewhere. Yeah. They wouldn't just throw it away. No, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so that, but that, they, would fit, they would fit clothes on it when I couldn't come to work. And then I lost weight and I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You got, got really sick, sick with I the got flu. Really sick. I, got, I, got the, I got pneumonia and then the stomach flu. And then I went back to work and they're like, shoot. <laughs> You're not healthy anymore. Yeah. So it's yeah, just. Yeah. So, yeah, then I didn't have that job. Wow. But then I found other jobs because we just collect jobs. Like you were yeah. saying about Monopoly, we just collect jobs <laughs> at wherever we go. Yeah. Lewis, tell us a little bit more about. Cause so you started in Seattle, and then at some point you went to Broadway. Can you tell us? Yeah. About so that? you know, I worked a lot in Seattle. I did like 40 shows in like seven years uh, in Seattle, and worked at every single theater company in Seattle. And uh, I just, we kind of got to the point where we're like, I need to move to New York eventually. Yeah. And we literally sold all of our stuff in we 2006. We had a garage sale, sold everything. Because uh, we were going to move to New York, and I had a contract up in Seattle in Everett, or uh, at the Village Theater doing uh, Evita. And so we're going to live out there, and then we're going to move to New York. And then we found out we were pregnant with our first uh, child. Wow. Yeah, and it's true. We literally had like a bench. And, we had like, nothing. We had nothing. And we had nothing. to like rebuy everything. And then we stayed Welcome in Seattle. Home, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was terrible. And then we. Uh... It was wonderful. The, the not having stuff. <laughs> the not, no, the baby was wonderful. The baby was, nice. the baby oh, was she's wonderful. still wonderful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. Uh, I stayed in Seattle for another uh, year and a half, and then I literally moved out to New York in, in right before the market crash in 2008, wow. and uh, moved there on a Friday, and I happened to be auditioning for um, a show right when I got there called Next to Normal, and there you go, and I, uh, it was just, just happened to be just a wonderful timing, and I uh, went in for my first audition. Um, went in for my second audition, went in for my he third audition. He goes in audition. for his first audition, and the casting director said, we actually think you might be better for this older part in it, but you don't really look like it. How fast can you grow some stubble and get yeah. a suit and come Well, that back? was like by the third, by the third audition, it, I auditioned for The Sun, and I came in, and I was like looking all like, you know, 18 as well Thanks, as I could. And, and they were like, can you come back this afternoon for The Doctor? And I was like, yeah, great. So I, and I'll sort of preface this by saying that I actually did the first workshop of Next to Normal in Seattle, because Brian Yorkie, the book writer, was the associate artistic director at the Village Theater. So I did the very first reading of that show then. So, and I did it for free. So if you guys are theater people, just do things for free. Never say no, because you never know when that project is going to come up that you're like auditioning for a Broadway show. And um, 
yeah, Bernie Telsey, the casting director, gave me his coat. And I was like, no, that's fine. I went out and bought a suit across the street to Gap. I came back that afternoon and like killed the audition. Wow. And then I came back here to Seattle because my wife and daughter were staying here for a couple months and then got the call. And then uh, three months later, I was uh, in DC opening Next to Normal. Came back to wow. D uh, New York, opened it there, and it was uh, rest is history. So, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, and when he auditioned for it, he said it's Next Normal. When he did it here, it was called Feeling Electric, and he's like, I think it's this show because he only had sides from it. He said it's the show that Brian had done, and then they didn't even know until he was in the second or third round of auditions that the people who were seeing him didn't know that he was connected to the show from before. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So do you just have the one child, or how many children do you have? Well, we had two kids in, uh, in New York. Uh, so we, we have three kids total. We have three kids total. Thomas, our middle, our son, our daughter Gwen was the first born here. And then Thomas, uh, born in uh, uh, New York, and then Charlie. Yep. How, yeah. do you, how do you do it? How do you have three children, and then you're acting on Broadway, and then Maureen's got her own business? How do you do it? Yeah. You well, just do it. And, and part of the reason why we moved back here is like... Just Nike, Nike it up. Yeah, yeah we exactly. just... I mean, when you have kids in New York, like you, check mark, you right? carry <laughs> kids in strollers up subway platforms. It's... It, New York is hard. It's, it's awesome. Hard. It's the greatest place. It's a, it's a fantastic place to live, and it's awesome, but it is hard. And I always say that there's one motto in New York, and it's just go. It's yeah. the only rule that anyone follows is you just keep going. You walk down the sidewalk, and you're... You know, people like the cell phone etiquette, it's really interesting because people don't have cars as much. Mm -hmm. And so you like walk everywhere, and so you're on your cell phone, and you have to keep moving while you're texting very or whatever. Fit. We were, we were very, very fit. fit. Like carrying like a hundred pounds of kid up a subway platform like every yeah. single day. You get really buff. Yeah. yeah who needs a gym membership? Exactly. Right? No, you don't. Yeah. Gym memberships in New York are expensive yeah. too. They're crazy. You do that? Yeah, you don't need it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but that sort of is we we were in New York and it was hard, but you just keep going. You just But we have every free day. babysitting here, which is yes, which is that great. Is a we're paying a sitter tonight, but um, but you know, the grandparents and the and the siblings and everything. It works out great. We just love use, use the here. family. Bring them in. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy. Which we didn't have in New York, and you pay a lot for babysitters in New York. If you're ever contemplating that move with children, so yeah. just move out there and babysit kids. Yes, that, yeah. oh, actually, yes, that's actually, a great. Actually, if you're a great babysitter, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, that yeah. is great. Yeah. Kick, great gig. Huh? Uh, we had a lot of actors and actresses who would watch our kids. <laughs> yeah. Any like anybody we would know? Any? Yeah. Uh, uh, Jen Damiano uh, watched our kids. Uh, oh, one person. Oh, and yes. Megan oh Fahey. yeah. Megan Fahey. Megan Fahey, who was they were her understudy, show. watched our kids. Um, if um, you guys ever saw the show Blues Clues, anyone know the show Blues Clues? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shout out for Blues Clues. Donovan's gonna be so happy about that. Um, our friends, our really good friends in New York, he was Joe on Blues Clues. No. Yeah. It's it, true. That's yeah, an it, audible gasp. That is I like a. It. I was not expecting that response, but. Uh, <laughs> There was that a, was our prime. That was no, when we were kids. Yeah, there was a, there was a, there was a, it. There was a great uh, diner that we used to go to, and, and uh, they gave us their seats. And I was sitting next to them. I was like, man, I know this guy from something. <laughs> and I'm and, normally the person who recognizes everybody. I was like, I don't, I don't know him. And he goes, I think he's the guy from Blue's Clues. And I said, I don't think so. The guy from Blue's Clues looks pretty like dorky and like super nerdy. <laughs> and this guy's cool. Yeah. And sure enough, it was he looks much cooler in person. But yeah. he, he <laughs> came, he, he watched our, he watched our kids sometimes because we. Yeah. Would trade off babysitting with he and his wife. Yeah, and when we had our, our son Charlie, they watched our kids. Yeah, we called we them when the we went to the hospital, so they yeah. watched the older kids. So, so anyway. Probably, probably just after the time we were kids, Blues, the Blues Clues guy who we were watching was watching your children. That yes, is correct. That is correct. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's we, amazing. And we had, we would have them over and like our kids, he was also on a, a kids like animated show called Team Umizoomi and Anybody? our kids would play this game of Team Umizoomi and m our daughter would assign roles. She's a born director. She would assign <laughs> roles to everyone and we were like, do you want to, do you think that Donovan should be bought, and she's like, "No, he's the bad guy because he's really funny with voices." And she's like, "No, no, he's not bought." And she would like assign other people his part. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's hilarious. Um, so, could you? How are you involved with PLU today? I understand that both of you are involved in the community. She's much more aspect. involved. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the alumni board, which is great and really interesting. And I wouldn't. It's nothing I would have thought to do. But if for students, there is a thing that when you graduate, they have alumni come back and give input and find out what's going on, which has been really, really interesting. Especially, it's an interesting time at PLU, and I feel like the university, for as crazy as things are, and obviously in your monologue, you certainly understand. There's really good people doing good work who want 
want good things for universities. So it's been it's been interesting to have sort of an inside look at things and sort of be consulted on stuff before it kind of happens and kind of figure out like, oh, you know, challenges that come up. But I'm also helping develop the film program here. There's going to be, oh. a, a, I'm actually a film minor from PLU because um, there was a brief period of time where there was a, the William Beckvar theater space is named after a guy named William Beckvar. Shocking. Um, <laughs> and he was my film professor. He was an awesome, awesome film wow. professor here. So, um, and I'm getting my master's right now in media and popular culture and studying film because I'm bored. And, um, <laughs> yeah, with all I, your extra I had so much time, I guess I'll get a degree. Like, yeah, I'll just yeah. do that too. Um, but I'm, we've been building a film program here, which hopefully starting in the fall, you'll be able to get a concentration in film wow. and media at PLU. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, That's amazing. And I t I've taught some classes and I've been working with showrunners, so it's, that's, it's awesome to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, you guys just are doing awesome stuff. Yeah, wonderful. Um, and then I guess I have one more question. What's, uh, what's next for you? I guess, what are you involved with currently? And then I, I guess you're bringing your thing about bringing the film program to PLU, uh, but at least in the more, uh, like, talent side of things, or Lewis, what's next for you? I know you're Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I have like a billion things. So like I still act, <laughs> um, I still do all that, but, uh, and I, I, just to plug my film, I have a film coming out uh, at South by Southwest in uh, a month called Outside Ooh. In, starring Edie Falco and Jay Duplass. So check out that film. It, I think it comes on digital uh, April 3rd. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's going to be a great film, directed by Lynn Shelton, local film, but, you know, it's going to be fantastic. Um, so it's still doing lots, lots of film stuff, um, uh, theater occasionally in Seattle, but I'm really, like, into producing. That's what I've been doing the last, like, few years. Out of, I, like, came back to Seattle to do that. So I've been here, but I've been literally traveling everywhere, Asia and South America and New York and Los Angeles and kind of everywhere. Um, uh, uh, in my company, Indie Thea Theatrical, which I started four years ago, uh, we took on a handful of projects. So they're like Broadway things and they're uh, entertainment products. So we have this show called Tenors of Rock, which opened a year ago in Vegas. So you can go, if you're in Vegas and you want to see a show, go see Tenors of Rock. Uh, it's like five guys doing classic rock. It's a really fun, fun show. And then we have a new uh, Frank Wildhorn piece called Song of Bernadette that we're producing right now. And... Um, a new show by Steven Sater, who wrote uh, Spring Awakening, and Burt Backrack. If you guys know Burt Backrack, he's like music legend. Uh, so we're developing a new piece of his. So that's kind of what I'm up to, many things. Wow, that's incredible. And you're doing more film now than... Yeah, yeah, I, it, I just sort of stumbled into it. I auditioned for, for film and television a ton when I was in New York, but never booked anything. And then I came back here and like literally uh, the first thing I auditioned for when I moved back here was a, a movie called COG, uh, uh, David Sedaris short story, booked that, went to Sundance, and then booked like a string of films and uh, television shows and uh, like Man in the High Castle, I was in the pilot of that. Um, uh, I was just in Captain Fantastic last year, which uh, did really well. Awesome yeah. things out. Yeah. 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 So it, I just I got been really lucky. Well, Her and needs grabbed her mic and she's like, well, oh, wait, just wait, yeah, just wait. wait. Well, I. People ask me all the time if I'm his agent, which I am, but just for film and television stuff. So it's great. But he would tell you, I mean, he's been extremely successful doing film and television stuff. But if I try and send him in for commercial things, so if there's actors Terrible. out there. Yeah. If I there's can't. actors out there who want to do commercials, it's a very specific kind of thing. And I'm like, Lewis, you're a good enough actor. Can't you act like you're good at doing commercial auditions? No, no I can't. And he no, says, he says burn. no. He says Big no. Burn. No, he says he can't do it. <laughs> I, I suck at it. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, after he dishes out all those movie titles, yeah, I suck at that. That's just yeah, commercials. That's crazy how just the different parts of the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations yeah, and all you. that. Congratulations, yeah, Doreen. You. What uh, what are you going? To um, I, to? I'm going to finish my my master's degree, which feels like the like the biggest craziest undertaking. Um, I have a couple of screenplays that I've written that I'm developing right now. One that I'm. She also has a radio show. I do. I, I on Catholic radio. Is that, is that rough in a Lutheran room? <laughs> yeah. And then there's silence. I do a whole thing on the 95 Thesis. I don't. That's not true. Um, it's a big that's Lutheran a joke. That's joke. a high-level Lutheran joke. Um, <laughs> that's too that's high for us. The, yeah. the thing Luther and I had in common is we were both Catholic. Is that a high-level no. joke? <laughs> oh, so that's how you that's, met. That, that's, um, yeah. No, so I do a radio show that I, I film. I record once a month, and then they air over the course of a month. Um, and I'm doing... 
a like a variety of things all the time. I'm just never bored. So I'm producing a or creating a TV series called Crooks and Nannies that I'm hoping to be able to to get some pitches in in LA. And yeah, that's incredible. Give it up for these two amazing Thank alumni. You guys. Give it up for them. We'll be right back with more from Will Jordan. You don't want to miss it. Thank you.